Welcome to our series on visual journaling. We'll be using the beautiful new Strathmore visual journals. And our goal for this series is that it's both informal and informative. So I'm going to pretend like you're all going to join me in my studio and let's get started. Welcome back. In this session, we're going to start adding words and text to our visual journals. Visual journals are the fusion of words and images, and it's this juxtaposition that gives meaning from one to the other. You can use one word on a page or hundreds of words on a page. They can morph into shapes, they can uh, run around the edge of a page, they can um, be the focal point of the page. As far as materials go, we have a lot available to us at stationery supply stores, craft stores, scrapbooking stores, art stores. I'll show you a few. Um, with purchased images, um, purchased text, I, I like to use them sparingly. They can be the accent to a page. One wonderful tool is an alphabet, a chipboard alphabet, because you can, you know, paint inside these letters. You can use um, these as a pattern to cut out letters out of um, other text or decorative paper or of course you can spray through them so let's finish this little d here this little r okay here is an example of text that is actually embroidered onto ribbon and it has adhesive on the back so this gives a textural element to the page interactive, invites the touch. These are wonderful, formal, fancy letters. If I were, was going to use one of those, I might use it as the um, beginning letter in my writing. It draws attention, invites the eye in. Some of my favorites are these rub on letters that are actually burnished. This is a bone folder. You can also use credit cards, this, um, a spoon, your fingernails, whatever it takes to apply enough pressure. You'll see the black turn to gray and that's how you know it's transferred to the page. So it you actually do have to concentrate a little bit. Pick it up slowly in case you've missed a spot. You can go back in and grab that off of there. All right. So we have adhesive, we have rub-ons, we have the stencils, and words can convey a lot of emotion. And I think it's a good idea to collect words, be aware of fonts because they um, they can play across your play with your images to get a point across. A very strong example would be this. Um, Race, it's an angry word. You can tell that um, there's a lot of, lot of emotion in a word like this. So I collect words, headlines, quotes. Other elements for text are things like music, pages from dictionaries, old books. They're a wonderful, wonderful addition to your page. This is called ephemera, and one of the best things I ever bought was a French dictionary. The little line images are just beautiful. I can blow them up. I can pick a particular word that emphasizes what I'm trying to 
say in my story on the page. So these are nice to have at hand, on hand. This page incorporates a number of things that we've been doing in this series. Um, the first thing is that it is an extended page. The page comes out and I have prepared my journaling page by placing paper to preserve some white and you know how I love sprays, um, then spraying around that leaving the white area to journal on. I've used a calligraphy pen here. I'm not a calligrapher, but um, these with the chisel points are very, very um, good to have on hand. Gel pens, colored pens, colored pencils, anything that feels good in your hand. There's no right or wrong way to add your own writing to your journal. Um, there's just many products you can choose from. So the other element you see in this spread is the rub on letters. And I, I wanted big, hunky, chunky words um, that give you an idea right away what this page is about. Another thing I've done that's um, a design point is repeating a shape. I've got a jellyfish here on my extension and when you open this up, after I journaled, I went back in with the jellyfish and sprayed it, and it, it softens the words and obscures them a little bit. Perhaps you don't want your words um, to be that obvious if you're showing your journal to people. There's a lot of things you can do to soften them, gesso over them. Uh, if they're very, very personal, um, I add envelopes in my journal, and that's where my very personal things goes. Depends on how you're going to use your journal. You can also see here that I've carried the color across this whole spread. I started with water media and then went to the sprays, trying to incorporate the same colors. When I talk about how sturdy these journals are, I've actually glued sea glass and rocks onto this page. And I was talking about how the spines allow the books to expand. Um, some other examples for creating spaces to journal would be, as I thumb through my journal and try to find some, So let's come back to that in a minute. I was uh, mentioning big hunky chunky and these foam stamps are some of my very favorite. I've had them for years. I like Roman numerals and you only need, I, I believe it's 12 letters to make all the Roman numerals. But when I'm doing a journal that I want to um, divide into sections like a travel journal and you want to focus on on certain aspects of it you can see that um, these kind of dance along the edge of the page some of them are actually coming off the page they don't have to be all lined up in a row let me show you how easy it is to use these they're cut very very deep which gives you a nice crisp edge this is a stamp ink, it happens to be a permanent one. Just a little pressure. You have a nice, nice crisp letter. Easy, easy, easy. We talked about using text in different ways in this instance, I've used it as a frame for my page, did my journaling around the edge, and then found some decorative paper that changes up the size a little bit. So you have a proportion change, but you're still sticking with the black and white. These aren't exactly words, but they uh, arrive as text when you look at them. Uh, also reinforcing these little ginkgo leaves Pick up 
leaves for your journal, look down when you're out on your walks, and, and it's so wonderful to have these things on hand when you sit down to actually make a journal page. So they're also, when you're overlapping them between two elements, it's kind of knitting your page together. So journaling can be stream of consciousness, it can be decorative, it can be personal, it can be colorful, and don't think that you have to have perfect handwriting or be able to write in calligraphy or do everything in haiku verses. Um, there's, nobody's grading this for you and nobody's judging you. It's your journal and you can write what you want, however you want. <laughs> 